Hey guys, my name is Courtney Budzen and this is What's For Din. Today I'm going to be showing you one of my favorite recipes of all time. I'm going to be showing you how to make a cheesy potato sausage casserole. A casserole sounds kind of boring, but this is the opposite of boring. It is explosively good. It is so good you can have it as a side dish or you can have it as main course like I'm doing today. The ingredients are very simple, very few. You're going to need some potatoes. I'm just using russet potatoes some Italian sausage, and I just took these out of the casing, some onion, garlic, butter, and then I have a mix here. I have some freshly grated mozzarella and just a little tiny bit of cheddar cheese, some whole milk. You can use half and half if you're feeling a little bit like a daredevil, some parsley, and then we're just going to put that on the finished product. And I have some paprika here, Italian seasoning, salt, and pepper, and that is literally all you need. It is so good. So let's go over to the stove and we'll get it cooking. So as you can see, my oven's preheated at 375, so you want to get that started. And also I have my potatoes that I made sure that I cut so that they're all similar sizes. And I put them in a bowl in a pot of cold water. Now the reason I start it off in cold water and I don't just throw them into boiling water is because if you warm it all at once, then the outside won't cook faster than the inside. Because a lot of times if you throw potatoes into boiling water, then the outside cooks really fast and then gets really mushy and is overcooked by the time the center is done. So that way you can avoid, you know, soggy potatoes. And then in the pan here, I'm going to start cooking up my Italian sausage. So I just have a little bit of olive oil and I'm going to throw my Italian sausage in <laughs> if it wants to come out. And then I'm also going to add my onion into that. And you're just going to keep breaking this up with your flat spatula and you want to brown this all the way through. And I know that Italian sausage already has seasoning, but I feel like it needs a little bit more. So I like to add some Italian seasoning also because I'm addicted to this stuff. So a little bit of pepper and I'm not going to add any salt because like I said, the meat's already seasoned and then you're just going to let this brown fully and then we'll go on to the next step. My Italian sausage is almost all the way done cooking, so I'm going to throw in my garlic. I didn't throw it in in the beginning because I didn't want to overcook the garlic. I don't want it to have the chance to burn. But now I'm just going to cook it long enough for it to be fragrant, and then by the time that's done, then the meat will be completely done. And then what we're going to do is just set it aside and wait for our potatoes to be done boiling. That way we can make some mashed potatoes. Okay, my potatoes are done boiling, so now what I'm going to do is something that you don't necessarily have to do, but I like to take the extra step because it makes a big difference in the texture of your mashed potato. This is called a ricer, and if you have one of these, definitely use it. As you can see, there's tiny holes in the bottom. It's going to make little tiny pieces of potato, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to take the lid off, open my little thing. And then you take a potato and you mush it and it comes out in these little, look at that. And it's super smooth. And you can see just by looking in the bowl, how fluffy those are going to be. So I'm going to finish doing that to all of these potatoes. Oop. And then we'll come back when we're done. So you could just see that texture that you get with that ricer. It's just such a fluffy, airy texture. Like I said, if you don't have one, don't worry about it. You can just use a hand mixture if that's what you normally use. So now I'm just going to add my melted butter and my warm milk. I like to add warm milk because I feel like if you use cold milk, it makes your potatoes super gluey. And I'm going to add some salt. You need quite a bit because this is a lot. And I'm actually making two dishes of this stuff because it's that good. And then I'm just going to take my hand mixer and just mix this all together. Okay, now that that's all combined, I'm going to do half of my cheese mixture. So I'm just going to kind of give it a guesstimate. Half of my cheese mixture, and then I'm just going to fold that in with my spatula. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my Italian sausage and onion that we cooked earlier. Okay, so give that a good mix. So what I'm going to use to bake this all in is just a regular pie pan. You can use a gratin or gratin or however you say it dish, but 
A lot of people don't have that, so I'm just going to use my pie pan. And we're going to take our mixture, put it in there. I'm actually making a double batch. And then smooth that out. So we're just going to add our cheese now right to the top, just like that. Make sure it's somewhat evenly spread. Okay, simple as that. Now all I'm going to do is throw this in a 375 degree oven for about 20 minutes. And then for about two minutes after that, I'm going to stick on the broiler. And you don't have to worry about placing it right underneath. Just make sure it's in the center for about two minutes under the broiler just till the top is nice and crispy and then it's finished. So I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. One thing I did forget to mention before you put it in the oven is make sure you put a little bit of paprika on the top and a little bit of pepper. That's optional, but I like it because it gives an added kick of flavor. But look how beautiful that looks. Something so simple that you can do as a side dish and it looks that good and it's about to taste good. So I'm gonna try it out. I like to cut it kind of like a pie, even though it doesn't come out like that. But you can see that brown top to it. Mm. Oh yeah. That is my friends, what you call a touchdown. <laughs> that is so good. Mm. So I hope you enjoyed spending time with me. If you do want to remake this recipe, just go ahead and look in the description box below and you'll find the measurements and the directions. And if you do remake it, please tag me on Instagram and we will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Man, that's good. Mmm.